What up guys today I want to talk about an interesting little topic I've been seeing on TikTok recently. There's a couple of creators that have been making some videos talking about Luffy and stating that Luffy since he's made out of rubber and his body can stretch and stating that his body can stretch you know pretty much infinitely that you know no physical damage or blunt damage can uh, you know harm uh, Luffy and they've gone to even extreme lengths of stating that somebody like Goku couldn't even harm him. One guy in particular said, are you guys stupid? Do you guys really think that Goku could harm Luffy through physical damage? I, uh, and one of his argument, uh, one of his statement was, Goku can hit uh, with the power to destroy a universe or the multiverse and Luffy should be able to take it because you know his body's made out of rubber so physical damage doesn't work on him at all. So that means that Luffy's durability is universal or multiversal. And that's such a ridiculously stupid claim uh, to the point where I just had felt like, uh, you know, I had to make a video on it. Now, before I get into this video, I do want to give a big shout out to a new subscriber of mine by the name of Blue572. So big thank you to you for uh, subscribing to this channel. But let's get back to the topic. So this topic has gone crazy and a lot of these, you know, one piece fans and these other anime fans have been making these claims stating yeah luffy cannot be harmed by any forms of physical damage no matter how high it is pretty much to even infinite levels of physical damage can't harm him because he's made out of rubber and he can stretch and he's elastic and they've used arguments like you know plastic man from dc and mr fantastic from uh you know marvel and they say those stretchy guys cannot be physically harmed so that means he has uh no limit uh, to physical damage and there's also a couple of other arguments that they have for why that is the case. So in this video, I'm going to go through why I do not believe that uh, Luffy has a complete immunity and uh, can completely uh, negate, uh, you know, physical damage. I do agree and believe that yes, that physical damage and blunt damage and blunt force is you know is not the best option to harm him because he has a high resistance and tolerance to physical damage but uh you know if you attack him with like you know a fire attack or try to disintegrate him or an energy blast or you know through a cutting or a piercing attack then you can harm him but the argument they're saying is that no physical damage works uh, on him at all which i disagree with and i'm going to get into it uh in this video now the arguments that they're making is that Luffy, his body, since it is stretchy and rubbery, that you can't really harm something that stretches out. It's like, you know, it's like trying to punch, uh, you know, something that's like made out of plastic that is very, very like uh, elastic to the point of like a high level where no matter how hard you try to stretch it out, it's not going to, you know, tear it. But that isn't true because even when you push on something like stretchy and rubbery and you bend it too much, you put too much like force onto it, it does, you can see like, like, like let's say you get a rub, uh, you know, or an eraser, even if you don't break the eraser, like, you know, rip it in half, you bending it a little, there's going to be some tears on the, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, eraser. There's going to be some micro tears. So there is always tearing that it cannot reform from and, re uh, you know, fix and build from. So it isn't completely true that rubber completely has no, uh, it can take any form of physical damage. And yes, you could say, well, that's applying pressure. But even if, let's say, you had a giant eraser and you were able to kick it, you were you would be able to bend it and it will create some micro tears on the sides of it on the edge of that uh rubber uh that giant eraser that's completely made out of rubber so it isn't completely true also the statement that he can stretch out infinitely i don't know where they got that from it has never been stated that he can stretch out infinitely we've seen him stretch out high uh, like to you know far extents but that does not mean it's infinite because if that was the case then it would be a lot easier for them to travel across you know uh the world because Luffy could just really grab on one pla a, 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 a place of the ground and then the other place of the ground and then just extend his arms out and have them like stretch out and then just launch them. Also the statement that he can't take any damage from physical damage because he's made out of rubber is also not true. It is stated in one piece that uh, you know Luffy has a higher resistance and tolerance to physical damage and physical damage uh, is not uh, not very effective against him but it's never been stated that he has complete immunity to it and this is something that really pisses me off about a lot of people when they make these arguments and claims and debates not only you know you know the whole no limit fallacy thing but also the fact that these people think that uh, you know just because they see a character let's say tanks a certain thing like mind hacks or reality warping or you know existence erasure that that means that they have a complete immunity 
to it, it doesn't work on them at all, it has no effect. That isn't true. A lot of characters have high resistance or tolerance to that type of, you know, attack or abilities, but that does not mean that they have complete immunity to it unless it's stated, which I've never seen it anywhere being stated that Luffy cannot take any physical damage. Only the fans have said that, which we know that the fans you can't really trust. There's been quite a bit of stuff that the One Piece fans have said that have made no sense. Like, you know, the One Piece Earth being the size of a st uh, uh, the sun or even the size of a solar system, which is ridiculous. The only argument they had was pixels, which is a really dumb way to, you know, make your point. But they've also stated like something like there was a topic and a debate for a bit. Uh, not too long ago, like a couple months ago, where there was like people talking about uh, if Krillin could beat uh, Kaido. And a lot of the One Piece fans are saying, no, he can't. He's weak in his universe. How is he supposed to beat Kaido? Kaido is one of the most powerful people in his universe. And it's like, yeah, that is true. But you're forgetting that there's a higher scaling. The Dragon Ball universe is way more powerful than the One Piece universe. So even being average... Uh, in terms of power and uh, Dragon Ball would put you astronomically higher than, you know, any character in, uh, you know, One Piece. And uh, the reason why I'm bringing that up is like, like I said, these One Piece fans are trying to make these claims about this and going overboard. And I don't want to insult them, but they are very terrible at power scaling. One Piece fans are some of the worst power scalers that I've ever seen. And they make ridiculous claims like even Kaido could beat, you know, Krillin, which isn't true because Kaido got killed by lava and Krillin would have been able to survive that. So obviously not true. It's, it's just nonsensical stuff. So I just want to give you guys that context because some of you guys might be saying, well, they might be legit because, you know, they're really big, you know, One Piece fans. So they might have a lot of knowledge, but also remember that them being big One Piece fans also does mean that they're going to be very biased. We see this all the time. You can't even cri uh, criticize or critique One Piece at all. Anything about One Piece or the writing or even the designs, uh, or you're going to have like some One Piece fan come after you and say some dumb shit like, you don't know what you're talking about. This is this and that. that. And it's like, just stop. There are some problems. That doesn't mean it's terrible. But like I said, they are really hardcore fans to the point where they become fanatical over, you know, One Piece. So I don't expect them to be very real, uh, you know, reliable when it comes to that. There's a lot of biases there. So I've never seen anywhere they stated that he cannot take, you know, any damage at all from physical harm. He does have a higher resistance and tolerance to it, but it's never stated that he can't take any. And it's never been stated that he can stretch out infinitely either. I just think that's ridiculous. And to make the claim that Goku, as somebody as powerful as him, especially now, would not be able to harm him because he can stretch, or, or is made out of rubber is ridiculous. You really think stretching and being made out of rubber means that your durability is infinite? That's just that's just completely stupid. That's a dumb argument. They're acting like Goku has to blast, like would have to fire an energy attack to kill him or other means, which yes, he could easily do that to beat him. But I also don't think he would have to, to do that to beat him because we've seen somebody like Boo, who has even crazier and better abilities of stretching and his body is even more unique than, uh, you know, um, Luffy's. His body's kind of like a Logio user uh, in One Piece. And even in Dragon Ball, you know, uh, Boo was able to be killed and even also harmed physically, which I will get into that. I'm going to get into all the points because I really want to shut this shit down because I really hate when people make stupid claims like this and try to undermine Dragon Ball characters' powers and all also over uh, and um, upscale the crap out of their own uh, universe. So let's go through some of their arguments. One of the argument they stated is that there was this crossover event with Goku and Luffy where they fought. And while Goku and Luffy fought, Goku was hitting Luffy and he wasn't taking any damage and he was able to handle it and come back and stretch and hit him back. And he was able to, you know, uh, handle that. And that this crossover event is canon because both Toriyama and Oda wrote it. So it must be canon. And that apparently that the writers came out and stated this is official. Uh, that is not true. I will get into that because that one is the biggest claim that these guys are making. But if you understand the more context of it and if you've seen it, you will understand why using that makes no sense and that's a stupid argument. But they say it is canon, which doesn't make any sense because if it is canon, Goku would have referenced Luffy at some point. He never did. Of his canon, it would have been... You know what canon means, right, guys? Canon means that it is, uh, you know... Uh, um, 
it is a part of the continuity of what has been shown in the series. So it would be a part of the story itself. The fact that Luffy is not mentioned, the fact that the One Piece universe obviously is not within the Dragon Ball universe or cosmology or even the other universes, that, uh, that pretty much means that it is not canon. Just because the original writers wrote this, does not mean that it's canon. That doesn't make any sense. There's countless crossovers that we've seen where official writers have wrote in it, uh, you know, the story. That doesn't mean that what is happening in that story is the truth. Like for example, Marvel and DC, they had a crossover event uh, a couple of times before, and they had a lot of crazy story events that uh, didn't make any se that much sense, but also have never been really that heavily referenced. They kind of hint at it a little bit some points throughout Marvel and DC, but that's just for playing around. Uh, but those events, even with those being direct, uh, you know, crossover event, people still didn't take those seriously. So if you stated like, well, you know, this character beat that character in the Marvel and DC crossover event, people are going to say, yeah, but it's a crossover event. It's not canon. So how come comic book fans could agree that a crossover event does not make the story canon, even if it's written by the authors, but anime fans become stupid and say the dumbest shit like, oh, well, it was written by, you know, uh, Toriyama and Oda, so... Like, what? And apparently that's wrong anyway because they're talking about the anime special. The manga never had, a, a, you know, Luffy and Goku fighting in that one. And the uh, anime, there was like a tournament. And it wasn't just Goku and Luffy. It was also another character named Toriko, which had like a short, uh, you know, anime run where they're trying to make it a bigger thing because it was also um, one of, uh, one of uh, I think it was... Um, I think it was Shueisha or what's the other, uh, the a toy, uh, toy animation. Uh, it was a toy animation project, right? It was under their uh, name. So they try to, you know, promote that. But this is just a crossover event. It's stupid that you guys are really using a crossover event for an argument because Goku punched him and he was able to take it. See, it's showcasing their actual power. No, it's not. Even in Toriyama's own stories, Toriyama had uh, some other stories where he had like gag mangas and stuff like that. And he had the Dragon Ball characters in there. And it was just meant to be nonsensical in that too. We don't even take that serious, which was complete works just from Toriyama himself. It was Toriyama with a new uh, work of his inserting his old work which had Dragon Ball characters in it and he wrote it a certain way and it's still not canon. So uh, we're not going to take that as canon. Why the fuck am I going to take some crossover event for promotion for this company that was just meant to be fun? Because the whole story didn't really even make sense. It was just Goku, uh, Luffy, and uh, Toriko ending up in this tournament uh, you know, setting and they were all three fighting against each other and then there was this enemy that came out that, you know, Goku started a one against two, uh, one against and fought. And like I said, it's it's never been stated that it's you know canon. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't actually scale to it. These crossover events are not meant to be taken seriously. They're meant to be having fun. The fact that you guys took it seriously and trying to make an argument just showcases how bad this argument, uh, this debate and this arguments that you guys are making that oh Luffy can't take it if he could then why are you using something as stupid as you know a crossover event to make your point but even let's say we do use a crossover event is uh is the crossover events you know power scaling consistent no they uh, clearly had nerfed goku so it can fit better in this because if they're supposed to have a tournament and goku's using his real like regular power from what we've seen from the series he would just obliterate you know luffy and Torko. Torko especially this is one of the biggest problems in the fight it wasn't just goku throwing physical attacks he was also blasting uh you know luffy and luffy was taking his energy blast if you want to argue that he could take, you know, physical damage, let's just give you that for this argument, right? Let's say he can take physical damage from Goku, no matter how strong he is. Why was he able to ha handle his energy blast, though? It's not like he can take energy blast that should have killed him. So clearly the crossover event, the power scaling doesn't make any sense because even if you want to say, well, his rubber body negates that, we do believe that Goku could beat him. Then yes, you know that Goku can kill him with an energy blast. Then how come the energy blast weren't killing him? If you watch the special, which these guys weren't, they just pulled up one clip where he punches Luffy and his head stretches back and he comes back and he hits him. And saying, see, he took that. But they ignored the fact that a few things. One, Toriko was able to handle Goku's hits, which he shouldn't be. He should have been killed by those hits. Luffy, not only was he able to handle his physical attacks, he was able to handle his energy attacks. And Luffy was able to get back and forth in exchange with Goku. So even if you want to say Luffy can take Goku's attack damage, 
he should not be able to be able to fight as fast as Goku. Goku should be speed blitzing him and completely dodging everything. He shouldn't be able to even throw a single punch that connects Goku uh, at Goku, but it did because it wasn't meant to be taken serious. They nerfed Goku so it could be more fun. Obviously, if they hadn't fight like how he was, nor uh, how he's supposed to be normally, he would be casually dodging all of Luffy's attacks. Luffy's Punches would have done nothing. Goku wouldn't need to turn Super Saiyan. Goku's energy blast would have killed him. Torko especially would have been dead because he doesn't have that excuse of being made out of rubber or being stretchy. So how did Torko be able to handle it too? Are you saying Torko is on Goku's level of ter in terms of power or close to that? Clearly not. So this doesn't make any sense of the logic behind it. It was kind of uh, completely stupid. So stop with the dumb arguments that you guys are making with that. Um, and then going to another argument that they make is they state that Goku actually fought somebody who had, you know, a rubber-like body and he couldn't harm him. And it was Botamo from uh, the Universe 6 vs. 7 tournament arc where Goku was punching him and couldn't damage him. Which, it is true his body is made out of a rubber-like uh, substance, so his body is kind of like rubbery. Because if you look on, search on Google about his character, they explain that. And that's the argument that people are making, but that's completely incorrect. Either these people are lying and taking things out of context just to make... Uh, you know, the argument seem legitimate saying that Luffy could take Goku's attack damage or his punches or they're just idiots and they don't know what they're talking about. They think that the reason that why Botama was able to handle Goku's punches, even though he was, you know, super powerful is because his body's made out of rubber. They completely ignore the fact that Botama would be able to also be very strong himself. He would be also very strong himself, thus using the key within his body to enhance his already, uh, you know, uh, durability so if regular flesh can be enhanced to the point where planet destroying attacks don't harm them obviously your body made out of a substance like that being having key on top of it would also be that much stronger but that's actually also not even the reason why Botama was able to take Goku's punches if they watch the actual episode it was explained that Botama has the unique ability that whatever attack uh, or the damage that he takes whether it's physical or energy does not affect him because his body has some weird like uh dimensional thing around him that transports all that physical damage into another uh you know dimension or universe we don't know if this universe is in Infinite or his ability uh, has no limits to it. I'm not going to say it does, but that's the only reason that he was able to do it. It wasn't because his body's made out of a rubber like substance or it's close to rubbery or whatever. That's stupid. The reason why he was able to do that was because he has the ability to, uh, you know, transport any damage he takes into another universe. That's the only reason. So stop with that crap. That was also a terrible argument to make. And we do have a character that's a better representation of that where their body's stretchy and they're made out of like goopy stuff like, you know, a Logia user and that's Boo, like I stated. Now in One Piece, some of you guys are gonna say, well, if physical damage can't harm him, uh, then how come Luffy's been actually harmed by physical damage before? And the argument or counter argument that a lot of One Piece fans are going to say is hockey because hockey does bypass that. Uh, that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, people like um, Logia users in One Piece are able to be hit because normally you can't really physically harm them. The only person that was able to be physically hit was uh, uh, Crocodile because he's made out of sand and if sand gets wet, it gets kind of hard and clumpy. And Luffy basically drenched his body with water, so he was able to, you know, harm him through that way. But other characters like Smoke, his body's made out of smoke. Then there's other people that are made out of, like, mochi, made out of goop, made out of poison. You can't really physically touch that. Uh, so the only way they could harm them with their physical attacks is by using hockey so they can augment their body and harm them. So they can harm the Logia type user, they can harm Luffy. Even though Luffy is not a Logia type user himself, he's a Zoan type user and his body is nothing like the Logia type user. So there's a, Logia type users have been stated directly that physical attacks don't work on them. Whereas Luffy, it's stated that physical attacks are just, you know, they're, uh, they don't completely beat him and he has resistance to it. So the other one, that's completely makes sense. So that's the argument why people are saying like, well, they have hockey, so you can't really harm them uh, unless you have hockey, which there is an argument you can use for a Goku could be able to harm him through physical damage, through means of hockey of, uh, if we just like, you know, if we think about it a little bit more, but they're stating that that's why he gets harmed by physical damage. So without it, you can't really harm him at all. 
uh, and we've never seen him getting harmed, which I don't agree. I'm pretty sure there was way earlier arcs where he's been harmed by physical damage. He was hurt by uh, Arlong in the uh, Arlong Park so uh, story. And yes, Arlong was biting him, which, so, which pretty much means he was piercing the rubber, which does bypass his rubber uh, durability. But he was also hitting him with physical attacks and doing Fishman Karate, and that was also damaging him. And there was other characters that were harming him physically too, like Rob Lucci from uh, CP9. Now, some people might say, well, these other characters are probably using hockey. I don't think every character that hit him physically, that harmed him, had hockey. And even if they did, there's two things about it. One, the hockey thing, it was a, it was a concept that was introduced far later in the story. Now, some people might say, well, Odo plans ahead, so it was probably already planned ahead and it just wasn't mentioned until later on and it was some hints. Yeah, that could be the argument. I will agree with that. But to state that just because Oda plans ahead doesn't mean he plans ahead for everything and throughout the beginning of his story. So I just think that that's kind of uh, a cop-out. Uh, but also, even if we want to say that, that doesn't mean that all these characters that are fighting him are using hockey. Now, some of you guys can say, well, when they use hockey, don't they have like an armament so their body turns like kind of like black so you can see it? Yes, but I think it was stated in One Piece that uh, people who can't use hockey or can't sense hockey don't really see it. It pretty much looks invisible to them. And those who can, like what, a Luffy and stuff, can't see it. So we see it as this like, you know, black uh, me metallic uh, like substance thingy that covers their body. So that's the argument is, oh yeah, it was just invisible because they couldn't see it before. But once we trained, he could see it. So they every time he got hit and he was hurt by physical damage, they were just using hockey and it was just invisible. I don't agree with that because there were characters that would have killed him if they used hockey if they hit him. Uh, like, and they've never stated that it was hockey that they were hitting him with. Like Garp, Garp hit, you know, Luffy before and he's ridiculously powerful, especially way more powerful than Luffy at that time. And with uh, the hockey that he has, he would have been able to, he would have killed him even if he held back. Even uh, somebody like Kizaru, Kizaru was able to harm him physically, so some people might say, well, he was using hockey. Well, if he was using hockey, when he was hitting him, he should have killed him instantly, because that's what he came there to do, was to kill him. He, he, the only reason he didn't was <coughs> because Luffy was saved, Luffy and his crew were saved by, um, I forgot what the guy's name is, uh, with the pop pop fruit. Um, but he basically transported them all away from the battlefield. But Kizaru, if he wanted to kill him, he could have killed him then. If he had the arm, if he had the arm in hockey and with his level of power, he could have one shot at Luffy. But he couldn't. Why? Because he wasn't using it. Is the, these characters can use it, but that doesn't mean they're always using it, or was the, you know even thought of them using it? Because just because the writer thinks ahead doesn't mean that every time he's going to think ahead, that he's going to think about every specific thing that he plays in the story itself. Um, so I disagree with that, but also let's talk about Goku. Could he harm him? Let's say, uh, let's say he couldn't harm him with physical damage at all and wouldn't need something like ha uh, hockey to hurt him. Could Goku hurt him with just physical damage? And if Luffy 100%, you know, no matter how much you hurt him physically, couldn't harm him. Yes, he could, because Ki is pretty much like hockey. Hockey and Ki, they basically, it's spiritual energy, it's life energy, it basically, everybody has it, it's just that there are peop uh, the people who are really powerful and know how to train can use it. It's just that regular humans can't really use it, just like Ki. Ki is not something that everybody can use, but everybody has. Also, uh, Ki and arm, uh, and Haki basically have the ability to increase their physical uh, you know, strength, their durability. It, it gives them ability, like psychic abilities. It gives them ability to, you know, uh, with uh, with hockey, you can like take people out, like a uh, conquerors hockey, or you know future side. You can see it through the future. Dragon Ball characters, you can't really do that with key, but you can do a lot of crazy stuff with key, and it does have like a lot of psychic abilities. So there's a lot of things you can do with it too. So key, I would say, is pretty much like hockey. So if Goku was punching him and he wasn't able to hurt him, all he would have to do is put key into his hand and punch him, and would be able to kill him. So yeah. He could harm him because Ki and Haki are pretty much the same thing. They come from the same concepts. And it makes sense since Odo was a big Dragon Ball fan. So he pretty much took some inspiration from, you know, Dragon Ball and uh, the writer from Toriyama himself. So Haki and Ki would be the same thing. So he would be able to harm him anyway. And let's say he can. Let's say he doesn't have, uh, Haki and Ki aren't the same thing. Just for argument's sake. Could he be able to, uh, to kill him with physical attack? 
Yes. Why? Because when characters are that powerful and they're punching, it's not just hitting them with physical force or a shockwave. It is far more impressive because if you know anything about science, when a character moves or hits something really fast or hits something really hard, they generate a lot of friction. So there's a lot of friction that's being created, which is a high amount of heat and uh, you know pressure that creates a heat and it can uh, you know start a fire. And we've seen this in Dragon Ball where you know characters. Um, can generate heat with you know their punches and stuff they can destroy things they can do a lot of things like that uh because pretty much they use energy into their uh bodies and stuff and they also punch really hard so if he was to punch Go uh, luffy he would actually technically disintegrate him due to the fact that when you punch at that speed and that much force it generates a lot of heat and a lot of friction so if he was punching luffy he would generate a ton of heat and friction to the point where yes the physical damage might not harm him but the heat and the friction from that punch would obliterate him and disintegrate him or punch a hole through him because we do know hot attacks like fire can't harm luffy and you don't need to have really like hockey to harm him with uh, you know uh, heat or uh, you know fire so technically even if goku can do that with his amount of speed that his punch is moving at and the amount of force it's able to generate it would be able to obliterate him science showcases showcases that our bodies the reason we don't do that is because we can't hit punch or hit that hard uh, hit that hard or punch that fast but goku could so if he punches at that speed his hand moving through the air at that speed and that power not only does it create shockwaves but it creates it generates heat and friction that's how we get those shockwaves so technically if he was to punch luffy he would be able to kill him and it's also not true that he doesn't take any physical damage from shockwaves and stuff like that because when they had um when they had Usopp fighting against Luffy, he was actually able to harm Luffy. Obviously, Luffy was holding back, but that shouldn't change his, you know, physical durability. So even while he was fighting against him, he uh, uh, against Usopp. Usopp used a thing called um, uh, I forgot what it was called uh, impact dial. It was an impact dial, and he hit him right in the face, and it did harm Luffy. Luffy didn't just go through it and didn't feel anything at all. It was an impact dial. So this device basically. It, I think it condenses, you know, uh, a connect force or an impact force and then it just releases it. So you got hit uh, with just the impact of it and it was able to harm him. And we know Goku, when he hits people, he generates a lot of like impact force because he's able to create big shock waves, destroy, you know, windows in a city nearby. He can shake the planet by punching and even just powering up. So of an impact dial can harm Luffy, then definitely Goku's punches can generate a shockwave and force to harm him. They state, they were stating that his rubbery body uh, would not be affected by the shockwaves. It would just like bounce off of it. That isn't true. The impact dial uh, clearly harmed him. So that isn't really uh, truly the case. So that's also wrong uh, on that regard. Now, there are a couple of other arguments that people make. People are using like Mr. Fantastic and Plastic Man, which those are completely different characters. Plastic Man, it doesn't really count because Plastic Man, he's legit uh his strength his uh, body is way more impressive than luffy luffy hasn't shown or done anything as impressive as plastic man so plastic man's like body is a lot more complex and a lot more uh you know impressive and mr fantastic has been hurt by physical damage um if you guys read the World War Hulk storyline, Hulk came down to the Earth to punish all the humans that sent him onto Planet Sakaar, which was pretty much the Illuminati, and it was because his wife died there and he blamed them. So he came there, he messed up everybody, the X-Men, the Avengers, and even the Fantastic Four. Reed Richards came around him and wrapped around uh, Hulk, and Hulk pretty much smashed him on the ground and started hitting him, and you see Mr. Fantastic literally laying down damage severely damaged so yes even somebody like mr fantastic can be harmed through physical damage just because he's stretchy does not mean he cannot be harmed in physical damage at all and like i stated boo boo's body is like a logia type user like i was explaining earlier and logia type users have stated to have you know be able to negate physical damage completely you will need directly hockey to harm them you cannot harm them through physical damage though you can technically disintegrate them i'm pretty sure it's just that One Piece characters mostly don't use energy blasts, they use physical damage and they have like other uh, things, but they don't really generate energy blasts unless if they have a, you know, a devil fruit that does that. But Dragon Ball characters could kill them that way too. But just going back to, you know, uh, to Boo, Boo would pretty much be like a Logia type user and he his stretching ability is way more crazier and way more impressive. Like his body, like the way it works, like we've, ha we've seen him being 
obliterated to a point where he just turned to smoke and still was able to reform. He's able to come back from being completely liquid. He can change from solid to liquid. So his body is a low uh, uh, and it uses magic. So the way his body manipulates is far more crazier and impressive uh, than what Luffy's is. And it was still able to be physically harmed. If you see when Goku was harming Boo, yes, he was able to regenerate, but it's because his body's made out of like hoop and stuff. Like, so he has high levels of regeneration. Luffy does not have regeneration. He would need to be a, have a way to, you know, regenerate or come back from it. Uh, his body can reform, but he's still gonna take the damage. And we saw Boo getting damaged. Hell, when Fat Boo was fighting against Kid Boo, Kid Boo was hitting him with physical attacks, and we see almost towards the end of the fight that Boo, Fat Boo almost died by Kid Boo pummeling him. So yes, physical damage does work on them. The only thing is that he has regeneration where Luffy does not have. So that's the only reason Boo was able to take physical attacks and keep on coming back was because he can regenerate. Where uh, Luffy, he just can stretch, that's it. That doesn't mean he cannot take uh, any physical harm at all. So if it could work on Boo, it could definitely work on him. Now, there's a couple of maybe other arguments that they might have for why, you know, Luffy can tank uh, Goku, uh, Goku's physical attacks, but I don't know. Like I said, even if we ignore that, we know that when a character punches super fast or hard, they create a lot of friction, a lot of heat, and that would kill him. So even if it's not the physical damage that's killing him, it's the heat that he's generating from the punch that would obliterate him. And we also know Rubber has a resistance to heat, but we know that heat still burns and harms you know Luffy and can kill him. So just because he's made out of rubber and rubber can negate certain things like electricity and stuff like that, doesn't mean it can negate it to an infinite effect. Maybe the electricity, because we've seen uh, you know, him versus Anel or whatever his name was, and he blasted him with, energy, uh, with his electricity and it couldn't harm uh, Luffy at all. Uh, but also he was able to harm Luffy by, um, by using some metal, he was using a, like uh, a metal uh, pole thingy, a golden pole thingy. He was smacking with that and harm, harming him uh, too. So I highly doubt Enel was using, you know, hockey with that. Um, so there's that. Some people are also saying maybe, you know, something about, um, you know, Gear 5 and Gear 5 Luffy can work reality. The Toon Force thing, I think they over exaggerate and take it way out of context because even when he was fighting against Ka Kaido, Kaido was able to harm him. The first time he fought him, Kaido was able to beat him and he had to get back to going to his farm again. And when he did, it's not like he easily beat Kaido. Kaido was still able to fight back and fired his final attack. Even though he failed, it was a threat to Luffy and Luffy was struggling. And it was stated that Luffy could still be harmed by cutting damage. Uh, so he was gonna be harmed by that anyway. Um, and he had overpowered and he had to put a lot of power into it. If he completely had like this Toon Force thingy, he wouldn't need to put in damage, any effort. He could have just easily did it. And Kaido's not even that powerful because he literally, him and Big Mama, who were two of the most powerful beings in, you know, One Piece got killed by lava. They fell down into a hole where there's lava and they got disintegrated and died. So clearly they're not as powerful as they try to make them out to be. So if he could barely beat Kaido with that, I don't think he can beat somebody like Goku with, uh, you know, that uh, either. So yeah, pretty much what I'm trying to say is Goku would be able to kill Luffy in every way through energy blast. He also has slashing attacks. You know, we know they can create energy blades, so you can create that too. Uh, we also know they can generate ki, which is basically like like invisible ki blast or wind uh, ki blast, where we've seen um, Super Vegito use it against Boo, and he cut his face, so he can use that to cut. You know. Uh, uh, Luffy and pretty much cut him up to pieces so he can do that way but also even with physical damage no matter how way you way you uh, which way you want to put it Goku can harm him because Ki and Haki are pretty much the same thing and we know Haki can harm him through physical damage so Goku would be able to ha harm him through that we also know that even if that doesn't work and if even if Luffy is durability is infinite Goku when he punches hard it generates heat and friction so that would obliterate him and disintegrate him with the power he's hitting. Also if you hit on a level where you can destroy or shake a universe, that amount of power can disrupt the fabric of reality. I'm pretty sure hitting somebody that's made out of rubber is not that hard to beat. Also the other stretchy characters that had those abilities, they can be physically harmed and they're on a higher level and Mr. Fantastic has been taken out even though he's you know completely stretchy himself. Um, I'm trying to think of what other uh, topics are strong with. Oh yeah, also the crossover event, it doesn't count because we've had crossovers in Marvel and DC, we don't take that literally. And the authors never stated and came out of this part of the continuity. And even if they did, it wouldn't make any sense. It would be a contradiction to what we've seen in the shows. Um, also the 
the the fight in that didn't really make any logical power scale sense because Torko should have been killed in that fight. He shouldn't have been able to handle Goku at all. Luffy wouldn't have been able to hit a get a single hit off of Goku. Goku firing those energy blasts should have killed Luffy or done serious damage, which it didn't really do anything. So it's not really a serious argument to make. And Boo is a better stretchy ability person, and he was able to be physically damaged and nearly killed through physical damage. Um, and yeah, Gear 5 also does not work. It's not like some completely other thing. And the no limit fallacy of him taking no damage is also ridiculous. And like I said, the impact dials have hurt him. Oh, Usopp using an impact dial on Luffy and it hurt him. So if that could hurt him, then I'm pretty sure the shockwave that Goku's able to generate through his punches could also harm somebody like Luffy. I just think that's ridiculous to say that it wouldn't be. And to say that every other time that, that Luffy's never been harmed with physical attack before hockey was introduced, or even if it was, it was because they were using hockey and it was just invisible and we couldn't see it. I also do think that's... Uh, you know, ridiculous. And there's never been said that he can stretch out infinitely. So, yes, Goku could beat Luffy in every every way possible, even through just physical raw strength alone. And any other argument you guys have, it just won't work. Now, the only part of my argument I will say that's kind of shaky is, has he taken physical damage before and been harmed by it without hockey? I would say that one's a little bit weaker, but everything else I had a pretty strong argument in there. And for that, you guys can do the research, like, you know, just go back and or if you guys already have knowledge of it just show me scans of you know times where luffy where it's taken damage in the past against strong opponents and being able to take it without any effect on him at all without them using hockey or, or what uh yeah without them using hockey uh so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and uh stay tuned for next time